My name is Russ Call. I'm the public address announcer for several San Jose State sports. Well, you know, like most kids, I, was, I started playing, uh, you know, when I was very, very young and played baseball up through high school. But along the way, I went to a lot of sporting events and was fascinated by the stadium announcer. From my first uh, contact with the Sports Information Department, I've been doing women's basketball since I was in school. And I think 1981, 82 was my first year, uh, first year announcing them. Um, and that's one of the wonderful things that we had going at that point in the relationship between KSJS and the athletic department is they really trusted us. You know, they, they knew that we were, we were going to school to become professionals. That's, that's what we were about. And any job that they asked us to do, we would perform in a professional manner. And, you know, they gave us that trust right out of the gate. And that's very rare uh, to give a college student with virtually no experience that type of trust right from the start. The job of the public address announcer is just to let the people know what's going on, not to embellish it. Uh, it's not a play-by-play -play position, and that's what that's what a lot of people think I do. Uh, you know, they think I'm broadcasting the game. No, I'm just in the building. I tell you who scored. I tell you who ran with the ball. I tell you who's coming to bat. I tell you who got the kill. Uh, it's it's not to say, wow, wasn't that a great kill by, you know, I'm not the cheerleader. I'm just the information giver. It goes so many different ways. You now the entertainment value of it, the, the competitive value, um, you know, being around a team of people. And when I, when I say a team of people, it's not necessarily the team that's on the floor competing, but there's a team of people that you work with that especially in this age where the entertainment value of a game is so strong you're working with you know video coordinators and uh people are writing my scripts and uh it's, it's a whole team of people that puts an entertainment package for a sporting event together and being part of that is, is something special My name's Lenny, I play sousaphone. My name's Dustin and I play trumpet. I think I can speak for all of us here. We started uh, doing this thing when we were all in high school. And so we, we sort of began uh, getting exposed to the football atmosphere and the sports atmosphere right from high school, since the band is a part of that atmosphere, both here in high school and in college. But in terms of college specifically, I'd say that we bring the most energy that we could possibly bring to the table in terms of lightening up the atmosphere, providing music for everyone, and plus we're all there cheering on our team. So that's something that we offer to bring to the table. So it just, it comes with the time of being in the band. When you're a freshman, you look at the seniors and you see what they're doing and mimic that, whether it be playing-wise or just culture-wise. So it's like, while we do put a lot of work into the programs and everything we put on, it, the culture just keeps building and building, even through the pandemic, it just kept building and building. We just, we essentially started back where we were two years ago with the way we were culturized. My name is Kira. I'm a fourth year veteran on the Spartan Spectrum dance team, and I am head captain. My name is Alexis Leinhardt, and I'm a second year veteran, and I'm just a dancer. I started dancing when I was like around 10 years old. 
Ever since then, I've had a love for fashion for dance, and I wanted to continue that on into my college years because I love performing and curls. Um, so I actually started off as a ballerina, and then I was introduced to Bruno Mars, and all of a sudden I just wanted to do jazz and, you know, more um, upbeat routines. So then I um, went on my high school team, and we did palm and jazz, which really helped me prepare for the Sparks and Spectrum dance team. I started dance when I was in ballet as well, and then for a little while I switched over to cheerleading for most of my years, which is why I'm also a second year on here, because I was on cheer for the years beforehand. But I wanted to come back to dance because it's my life, it's who I am. I just get to groove and I can still tumble as well. I love getting to know, like meet new people and become build a bond with my team and just spread positivity and perform for all the teams. Yeah, what I really like about being a part of Spark and Spectrum, in competitive dance with UCU, you don't really interact with the audience, but when you're on this team, you do. So we could just see alumni, we could just see um, Greek life, students, faculty members. So that's the best part, really, um, really engaging with the school and like making them want to come to the games. I have to say, probably getting to interact with all my teammates, from the fans to the alumni. I personally know I do have a few alumni who are my friends since we have been meeting and greeting recently. And just getting to be a part of all the different performances and rallies really helps boost up my confidence as well. And just really helps build my character. The symbiosis of the game, my job, and the crowd. It all feeds off each other. If I've got a good game to work, then I'm going to be at a high performance level. And if I'm at a high performance level and there's a good game to watch, the crowd is going to be involved in it. And the, the players feed off the crowd and I feed off the players and everybody feeds off each other. And that's, that's where it gets really good. You've got to get in, you've got to get out, you don't want to be over the top of the action, you don't want to impose yourself on the game, you're, you're just an ancillary figure. You're not part of the game, you're part of the entertainment package, but you're not part of the game. So the idea of get in, get out, get it right, and get it quick. You know, I don't want to be the guy out in front of it. In fact, that was one of the hardest things that I had to work through when I first took over the job, pe uh, uh, people would you know, walk past me at the old Civic Auditorium after a game, and they'd say, oh, you had a great game tonight. I didn't play. I had nothing to do with us winning the game. I'm just a guy in the background. And for me to accept that I am, I'm a part of that total entertainment package that people are entertained by that, is, that includes the game, that's something that I've really had to, to work on, and it, it's taken me a, hard, a long time to, to accept it. Uh, definitely the most challenging thing I'd say is the preparation and rehearsal that we have to take. Every single song that we play, every single uh, jingle that we play, there has to be a certain amount of rehearsal time that goes into it so that everybody plays it stylistically the same way that we sound it, that it sounds the way we want it to sound. And also, there's the visual component too. We also gotta look the part and we gotta move and look the way we want to as well. So we have like the, the sound component which goes into music rehearsal and then you have the visual component which goes into the visual part of rehearsal as well. We rehe when we rehearse in person, those are, well, we review both of those things. Um, I think all the time that goes into learning all the routines and all the chants and everything, it takes a matter of a couple practices, not just one, to really perfect them also. Yeah, like as a dancer, we really like, we put a smile on our face. It's, it's our job to, you know, like like an illusion, you know, dance, perform, but you know, behind the scenes, yeah, we are working hard. We have three practices a week, um, so there's a lot of effort into you know, basketball games. I'd say probably training off season two because even though we have our three practices a week, we still have to go to dance classes outside of it, continuously keeping keeping up with all of our routines and. Everything. 
part of school one, as well as keeping up with all of our classes. As well as that's pretty much it. And then our summer training as well as our winter training for the race. Start early. Uh, if you know, if you can do games in you know high school or uh, you know you volunteer at your high school to to do games, uh, you know find American Legion baseball or you know Little League baseball and volunteer there. If you you know if you have to volunteer to get in, that's your foot in the door. And if you're good, people will find you. Just do it. Yeah, literally just do yeah. it. Reach that's out. That's it. Find find someone that's in it, or go to a rehearsal, or. Even go up to the marching band at a football game or a basketball game. Yeah. Anytime we'll be able to tell you what you need to do to get in. Yeah, I guess our last note is to try out this yeah. um, for dance team in May. We're really yeah. excited for the next season, so marching up. <laughs> My name is Russ Call, and you're watching this video.